With my inlays nice and even, uh, I was able to go through and sand the fretboard down to get the final smoothness and get any tooling marks out of it. I started with 220, uh, went to 400 grit, and then 800 grit, um, and it's, it's really smooth. Um, I guess it's just a feature of the wood. Um, you know, some woods are like this. Uh, I know Ebony's like that, where uh, if you go to a pretty high grit, you know, 800 grit or, or even higher, um, it's a very, very smooth, hard surface. And so uh, I like how that feels. Some people like it to be uh, more natural and grainy. Um, you know, neither one's better. Um, so once you get to that step, uh, the next step that I like to do is to, to fret the neck. I like to do this because the neck is still square on the bottom. And so when I put this on my bench and I'm trying to hammer in the frets, um, the neck isn't going to rock back and forth. Had I carved this first um, and tried to do it, it's still possible. Um, you can put sort of a, uh, a rest underneath the neck like this. Obviously, you know, when you're refretting a guitar, um, you don't have the option to have, <laughs> have the neck flat like this, but I find it to be easier. And so I carved the neck after I put the frets in. And so as always, uh, I've got my uh, materials from Stumac. Um, I get the pre-cut fret wire. Um, to bend your own uh, seems like more effort uh, than the number of guitars I'm going to do. Um, and I haven't really gotten around to making one of those fret benders. I certainly don't want to pay over $100 to bend fret wire. So this is slightly more expensive, um, but at my volume of building, uh, it doesn't really matter. What's interesting about this package is it comes 24 frets. Uh, usually I do 22 fret necks. And so uh, once I get, I guess, 11 guitars made, I'll get a free set. Um, it's a pretty expensive way to get a free set of, of, of fret wire, but you know, I digress. And so what I'm going to do is go through uh, and start to hammer each of these frets in. And when I started uh, building my first neck, you know, this was the thing that I was uh, the most scared of is, you know, how hard is it to install frets um, and, you know, what happens if you do it wrong? Um, What's great that I found is you can actually hammer the frets pretty hard. Um, you want to certainly make sure they're seated in the neck um, so that they're, they're not wiggly in any way. Um, and of course, you always have the opportunity afterwards to level the frets again. Obviously, you don't want to bash them so hard that you have to level down uh, and wear away all of the fret material, um, but you do have an opportunity after you go in with the hammer um, to do this. Uh, other people have uh, kind of a clamping mechanism or call um, that actually presses the frets in. Um, again, it's cheaper to buy a hammer, and so I did it that way. And, uh, you know, a couple guitars in seems like a reasonable way to, to put frets in. So you can see with these pre-cut frets, um, there's definitely... Uh, at least a half an inch overhang on both sides, maybe even a little longer. Um, this is no problem. We'll go back in and snip off the ends after we're done. Uh, you definitely don't want to snip the ends before and try and um, get them exact size. Uh, there's just no need for that, um, and it, it ends up being harder. Once we have our fret in place, you can take your fretting hammer, and the way that I do it is to hit down on each of the edges of the fretboard. Uh, this will slightly bend the fret uh, up a little bit in the middle. And then when you hammer in from the middle outwards, it will start to push the fret outwards, which will help seat it, um, use these little uh, tangs to stick into the wood. And so go one side, hit the other side, hit the flat, uh, hit it in the middle, and kind of go this way and this way. Um, and you, you can hit this pretty hard. Uh, I'm, I'm actually always pretty surprised uh, on how much effort this really does take. Um, so don't be too, uh, too particular because you do have to make sure this fret is good and seated.
Okay, so now I have both sides in. I'm not sure if I can get this in the camera. I have both sides in, so now I'll start in the middle, go outward, and try and push the front down. There you go, that's pretty close. Let's see if I can get in here. Um, eventually you'll hammer the fret down to the point where um, the underside of the, the fret is actually on the uh, neck or very close to it. And once you get to that point, um, the fret is pretty much seated in place. Um, what I like to do is, uh, you know, do all of the frets first, then go back and, and do um, to just check them when I'm done so that I can kind of maintain even pressure by just going over every single fret at once. And so um, it's going to take a while to do this. So I will time lapse this whole thing and then uh, I will show what you do after you have all the frets in the fretboard. So now that I've gone through uh, and installed each of the frets, I can go through and uh, hammer down to make sure that my um, frets are all uh, both seated properly and hopefully with the same amount of, of hammer pressure. Um, what we're trying to avoid is having a situation where a fret isn't seated properly and we're also trying to avoid putting dents uh, into the, the frets. And so I'll go ahead and uh, hammer these down and then we'll uh, take off the ends with my uh, nippers here. Okay, now we can nip off the ends. nipped off I'm gonna go back one more time just take a look at my frets um, try and make sure um, that I didn't have any uh, tricks being played on me with all the extra parts on the fret uh, hanging over so I'll just tap them down one more time uh, and then I'm gonna head over to um, to the bandsaw or not the bandsaw and then I'm gonna head over to the belt sander um, with a 220 grip belt and just lightly run this against here to, to start smoothing up the frets. Um, this is obviously not the last time I'm going to um, work the frets. Obviously, uh, when I carve the neck, that's gonna have an opportunity to uh, mark them up uh, slightly. And then, you know, during final setup, uh, I'll give the whole guitar fret leveling um, and, and crowning and, and everything like that. But, um, the belt sander uh, does a good job of, of starting to get the frets uh, flush and smooth to um, the edge um, just so that you know, it takes a lot less time filing. After running this on the belt sander uh, with a 220 grit belt, it started to uh, smooth out the edges here. Um, the goal isn't to try and completely avoid filing down the frets. Um, but again, it's really just to try and smooth them out a bit so we can do less hand work. So the last step that I'm going to do uh, is to take some black CA glue, uh, the same glue that I used for the um, fret markers, and wick it underneath the frets. Um, there's some question whether or not um, you actually need to glue your frets down. I'm uh, certainly not good enough to do it uh, on the fly before I hammer them in, and so I'll wick the glue. Uh, into the slots and then let it dry for a while. So the glue has wicked into place. 
Um, I hit the glue with some accelerator to make it dry instantly. And so once again, I'll go over to my belt sander and just smooth it off to remove any of the extra glue um, that's not needed. After a little bit of time on the belt sander, you can see all the glue is gone. We've got nice flush frets to the fretboard. And so in about 45 minutes time, I've installed the frets using a hammer.